G'day and welcome to the incredible southern states of the USA. Immerse yourself in the intricate history and culture. Explore the musical legacy that's second to none. And savour the fabulous food and heartfelt hospitality. I'm Adam Ford and in this video we bring you 10 amazing things to do on a road trip from charming Charleston in South Carolina all the way to fabulous New Orleans in Louisiana. Along the way, we'll get to the bottom of some ghostly goings-on in Savannah, learn about the rise of the civil rights movement in Atlanta, drop by the home of country music Nashville, cross the welcome mat at Graceland in Memphis, and cruise the mighty Mississippi on board a heritage paddle steamer. The best of the South awaits but before we hit the highway, take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing travel ideas. With its cobbled streets and period architecture, there are few cities as beautiful as Charleston, and it embodies that southern graciousness we've heard so much about leading up to our trip. Established in 1670, the city gained prominence, wealth and prestige on the back of rice, cotton and indigo production, fueled by the slave trade, and suffered widespread devastation in the American Civil War. Now, what better way to explore one of the oldest cities in the South than by horse and carriage? I teamed up with some fellow Aussie travellers to take in the sights. All right now, Sue, what an absolutely fabulous place Charleston is. And what a great way to see the city too. Absolutely, by horse and cart, guided by Myron. Thank you very much, Myron. It's fantastic. Yeah. Now, there are 159 churches to explore around town if you're interested. And of course, gorgeous antebellum architecture, which essentially means buildings that were built before the Civil War. Now, it is a little bit warm, but as they say in Charleston, you don't sweat, you glisten. True. And glisten we did, but it was well worth it to hear Myron's commentary and get a fascinating insight into the city's history. Welcome to the southern city of Savannah. Now, this city has had an incredibly turbulent past. We're talking war, fire, a yellow fever epidemic, and it's renowned as being one of the most haunted cities in the whole of the United States. Even the visitor center is built right on top of a graveyard. Now, to get to the bottom of all that, we're gonna join a local ghost tour. Beware of the heights. Now, I'm a definite skeptic, but up for some phantom fun. And with just a day to explore Savannah and our ghost tour booked for that night, we head for the riverfront, once a nefarious no-go zone, today a revitalised tourist precinct. Like Charleston, Savannah is an incredibly historic destination, and as night falls, the city does begin to take on an ethereal quality. We meet old Savannah tours in the heart of town and set off to see more of the city by lamplight. And I only have one lamp. <laughs> yeah. Our first stop is the popular Pirate's House Bar and Restaurant, reputedly popular with real pirates back in the day. Young men were supposedly lured down to the cellar, drugged, then smuggled out through a tunnel to waiting pirate ships. The cellar is said to be haunted by the souls of those who resisted, although tonight, they're fairly quiet. The tour also includes a visit to the Sorel Weed House. 
dating back to the 1840s and dogged by grisly tales of betrayal, it's definitely one spooky spot. We only have a single afternoon in Atlanta, but you could easily fill a week in Georgia's capital city. One of the must-sees is the Martin Luther King Jr. National Historical Park, which covers several blocks to the east of the city centre and commemorates the life of the revered civil rights campaigner. Visit the home where King was born and the Ebenezer Baptist Church, where he was co-pastor from 1960 until his assassination in 1968. All right, over here in Tennessee, things get a little crazy. Now, many a musician has arrived on these streets with nothing but a guitar and a dream. This is the spiritual home of country music. And keep your eyes peeled here on Broadway. You could bump into anyone from Dolly Parton and Garth Brooks to the Kings of Leon and Keith Urban. This is Nashville. There's certainly nowhere like Nashville. And while it's renowned as a party town, this is the place to be if you want to make it as a serious country music artist. Begin by exploring the district, which is lined with honky-tonk bars, restaurants and record shops. Music is everywhere, and legendary live venues like Tootsie's Orchid Lounge have launched the careers of the likes of Willie Nelson and Chris Christopherson. And at the other end of the spectrum, you'll often see those starting out hitting the pavement with just their guitar, just to get noticed. Shaped like a giant keyboard, the state-of-the-art Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum houses a fantastic collection of country music memorabilia. You could spend hours here. The museum's mission is to preserve the evolving history and traditions of country music. And while tastes and fashions have undoubtedly changed over time, the core premise of honest lyrics sung from the heart is clearly alive and well. Package your visit to the museum with entry to legendary RCA Studio B, where the likes of Dolly Parton, Roy Orbison and of course Elvis Presley recorded numerous hits. Now Elvis liked to record late, sometimes well after midnight, and he left his mark on the studio by having mood lighting fitted. X marks the spot where the king stood to sing. No visit to Nashville would be complete without a night at the Grand Ole Opry. Ladies and gentlemen, the Grand Ole Opry Square Dancers. This weekly country music stage concert that's also broadcast as a radio show has been running since 1927. Start with an afternoon backstage tour, then settle in later for the show, which on the night we attended included Ozzy Morgan Evans, Deanna Carter and 15-time Grammy winner Ricky Skaggs. On to Memphis for a visit to one of the most famous homes in America. Elvis purchased Graceland in 1957 for just over $100,000. His beloved home was redecorated in the early 1970s and it's gloriously kitsch. 
We can only show you the formal lounge room with its 15-foot custom sofa and the music room, which features one of Elvis's three pianos. But there's plenty more to see on the mansion tour. Located at the back of the main house, the racquetball court now houses a display of many of the singer's favourite stage costumes, along with accolades for album sales awarded to him over the decades since his death in 1977. Visitors can pay their respects to the king at his final resting place in the Meditation Garden. Leave enough time to head across Elvis Presley Boulevard to check out Elvis's incredible collection of classic motoring bling. Along with his two remodelled private jets. One of the highlights of travelling through the south is the Tucker. Back in Charleston, we caught up with Brad at famous Hyman Seafood to learn more about Southern down-home cooking. Southern food is one of a kind. It, it sticks to your bones. It's comfort food all the way. Yes, it is. Grits and cheese and fried chicken and fried fish. Uh, you can't get it any better. What are some of the unique things that you're going to get to try in Charleston, say here at Hyman Seafood? Charleston is definitely known for the, the she crab soup. Um, several restaurants you visit will have she crab soup on the menu, highlighted. She crab soup is a, it's a cream based soup, uh, similar to a chowder, basically with the, the crab roe, a little bit of sherry, and crab meat. I think we have some of the best she crab soup in, in Charleston. Now I've heard a lot about shrimp and grits. Just describe it for me. The trick to the grits, people want to know what, what do you do to the grits? Why are they so good? Um, you have to cook them all day and you add butter as the day goes on and uh, the more butter you add, the longer you cook, the more salt you add, the better they get. Um, an old southern tradition is shrimp and grits and fish and grits. A lot of people eat that for breakfast. Uh, here in the south. We have two styles, shrimp and grits at Hyman's. Okay. What's a hush puppy? A hush puppy is what you make to throw out the back door when the dogs are barking. Okay. No, uh, years ago they used, they, they would, uh, they would make, they're, they're, they're very inexpensive. It's, it's cornmeal um, with a little bit of flour, onion, sugar, beer, um, a little bit of honey, rolled into a ball and deep fried. It's hard to be. So what's the best thing about Southern food for you? Uh, once again, it, it's the comfort when you're finished with a meal. If you're not ready for a nap when you're finished eating, then, then you didn't do something right. We really encourage everyone that visits to, to try different food, you know, try the shrimp and grits, try the fried grits. Um, and uh, we, we, we always tell everyone the guarantee is, you know, try it, if you don't like it, I'll bring you something else. On the road again, and we head south from Memphis to Natchez and on towards New Orleans. But first, there's time for a stop at Oak Alley Plantation, another incredible opportunity to step back in time. Now, this home was originally built between 1837 and 1839, but the oak trees out the front are actually a century older than the home. Incredible. Now, the property was originally known as Bon Séjour. It was a sugarcane plantation, but like many properties here in the south, after the Civil War, things didn't go well. It fell into bankruptcy and was finally made a museum back in 1972. Today, it's just an extraordinary look back at the antebellum period. It's hard to reconcile the opulent surroundings of this home with the recreated slave quarters here and those we saw at Magnolia. But that was the reality of plantation life.
Each room at Oak Alley is elegantly furnished, just as it was in the 1800s. It's a time capsule like no other. It seems only fitting that we should end this incredible journey with an evening jazz and dinner cruise on the mighty Mississippi River on board the famous Natchez. The evening views of New Orleans from the water are absolutely breathtaking. For more ideas for amazing things to do in the southern states of the USA, just head to our website. <laughs>